Farfetched. Hi y'all, I'm Yuki, and today we are going to be making a tier list for Gen 1, and we're going to be rating these Pokémon based on their in-game viability. And what that means is basically a combination of how easy is the Pokémon to obtain, is it a pain to evolve, how good are the moves it learns, how good are its stats, all that stuff. So this tier list is specifically for Gen 1, so Red, Blue, Yellow, specifically those games. This doesn't apply to like Fire Red, Leaf Green, or any of the other Gen 1 remakes, just because of funny aspects of Gen 1 that aren't present in other games. Before we get started with actually ranking these Pokémon, let's just make sure we're on the same page here with each of the tiers. S tier is something that is absolutely fantastic, one of the best Pokémon in the game. A tier is still very good choices, just not quite as good as S, but still very solid all-around picks. You can't go wrong with them. B tier is still good, but, you know, you could start doing better. C tier is... Could definitely be better, but could definitely be worse. D tier is... Uh, kind of the bottom of the barrel. You know, there's not really much you can do to get worse than D tier. And then F tier is reserved for things that just come too late into the story or even are exclusive to the post game. So basically not usable in game. But anyway, I think that's all there really is to explain. So let's get started with the tiering. So since we're just gonna go in Pokedex order here, the first Pokemon of course is Venusaur, which it's one of the starter Pokemon. It's probably the best of the starters. It gets a guaranteed critical hit with Razor Leaf because of how Gen 1 calculates the critical hit ratio of Pokemon. It gets Leech Seed. It does have a weakness to Psychic though, and Psychic is a very powerful type in Gen 1. I think I'm gonna put Venusaur in A. So next up is Charizard, which is basically the exact opposite of Venusaur. <laughs> It's bad for the first two gyms, and if it gets overleveled, it's bad for the third gym. It does have a guaranteed critical hit move, though, in Slash. And yeah, in Red and Blue specifically, it does not learn Fly. So its best Flying-type move is Wing Attack, which is only 35 power in Gen 1 for some reason. Now, Charizard is still a fairly solid Pokémon. It's not bad by any means. But just because of those limitations of it, I think I'm gonna stick it in B. So next up is Blastoise, which unfortunately is a water type Pokemon, which means it kind of by default has a lot of competition with all the other water types that are in the game. Still, it's by no means a bad water type. It does have access, of course, to Surf, but it also learns Strength, which are basically the necessary HMs in the game. Blastoise does have the funny attribute of learning Fissure, and so with the X accuracy, how that works in Gen 1, that makes it so that Fissure will always hit. Blastoise is also capable of learning Blizzard, which in Gen 1 has 90 accuracy. I think I'll give Blastoise A. By the way, one other thing I want to note here, the Pokémon in each tier, they are placed in their Pokédex order. So, I'm not saying, like, that Venusaur is better than Blastoise, for example, except it is, but... <laughs> Next up is Butterfree. Now, of course, the meme with Butterfree is that it's a very good early game, because it gets things like Sleep Powder and Stun Spore, but after that, it kind of begins to fall off just because its base stat total is so low. I'm going to put it in C just because it does learn status moves, which can be useful no matter where in the game you are. It definitely has something over, say, Beedrill. I, <laughs> I don't think I really have to justify much with putting Beedrill in D tier. It's one of like 30 poison types in Gen 1, so it's weak to Psychic, it has bad stats, it doesn't really get any good moves, it's just not that useful. Some people might say it gets Twin Needle, so it's able to hit Psychic types super effectively, but you have to be damn sure 
that that twin needle is going to eliminate that psychic type. Because if it doesn't KO that psychic type, then you're dead. If Beedrill doesn't Oko its target in general, really, you're dead. Pidgeot. It's pretty balanced and pretty fast too, but I don't know. I just don't see why you would use Pidgeot when you can get Fero around the same point in the game. And it's just generally better. So we're going to put Pidgeot in C tier. Raticate is another one of those Pokemon that's pretty good early game because it learns the incredibly powerful Hyper Fang early on. But unfortunately, it's poor stats don't really help it. It's going to kind of reach its peak very quickly. So it's either C or D for me. I'm going to put it in D. Next up is Firo. So Firo is a bit frail, but it's definitely more offensive than Pidgeot. And Firo gets a really good flying type move in the form of Drill Pack. I'm tempted to put Firo in B, just because I definitely think it's a step up from these guys. Let's see, next is Arbok. So Arbok doesn't have the greatest stats in the world. It's pretty frail and it's a poison type, which not only means it's weak to psychic, but poison types have like no offensive moves in Gen 1. The best one it gets is Acid, which is 40 power. It might as well not have a stab to speak of, D tier. So Raichu is pretty fast, it has base 100 speed, which means it has a fairly good critical hit rate, which kind of makes up for its okay offensive stats. It doesn't get terribly much in terms of move variety, it's basically going to be an electric move, a normal move, and then filler. But still, it's probably one of the better electric types in the game. I say it's B. Sandslash has just had the worst move pool for the longest time. The best thing Sandslash learns via level up is Slash, and it is just barely fast enough to get the guaranteed critical hit from Slash. But yeah, if you want a ground type move on this thing, you're gonna have to use your Earthquake or Dig TM, but it has pretty solid physical bulk. But if you wanna make the most out of Sandslash, you're gonna need to use a TM on it. And here's the thing, Dig isn't a bad option in Gen 1 because it does have 100 power. I'm going to put it in B. Alright, so next is Nidoqueen, which is basically just inferior Nidoking. But that doesn't mean it's bad or anything. Between learning Body Slam via Level Up, and Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Blizzard, Fire Blast, Surf, Rock Slide, Earthquake. It's very heavily TM reliant, but I'm going to put it in A. And I'm putting in A purely because Nidoking is just Nidoqueen, but better. So Nidoking gets to be the first Pokemon we put in S tier. So Clefable is really interesting because you can evolve it as soon as you get it. And on top of being able to evolve it as soon as you get it, you can also get the Mega Punch TM where you get it as well. It's not the greatest because it's 80 power, 85 accuracy, but it'll hold you over until you can get like Tri-Attack or Strength. But yeah, like with Nidoqueen and Nidoking, this thing loves its TMs. I think if you're gonna use something heavily TM reliant that needs a Moonstone, you're better off with one of the Nidos. But Clefable's still a pretty solid pick, and you don't have to worry about a ton of weaknesses because it's only weak to fighting, whereas the Nidos are weak to Psychic, Water, Ice. Ninetales is kind of an odd one. It has a good special stat, it has a good speed stat, but it doesn't really get a good fire type move until a little late in the game. Vulpix, at least. Vulpix gets flamethrower at level 35, and until then you're stuck with Ember. It does get Confuse Ray too. Confuse Ray is another nice option, adds a little bit of variety to the move pool. It doesn't really get anything great from TMs. It does get Body Slam. It gets Dig for some reason. I'm not sure you'd really want to teach it Dig. I'd be willing to put Ninetales in B just because it does have good stats. It takes a while for it to learn good moves, but once it does, it's honestly a solid pick. Wigglytuff. Everything I said about Clefable applies here, but it's just worse. B tier. Golbat. Can I just put Golbat into F because of its horrible sprite? So for flying type moves, your best option is wing attack. It doesn't learn a poison type move other than toxic. 
So, this thing's typing is purely for defensive purposes, which... It's weak to psychics, so that's automatically a point off right there. God, this thing's move pool is horrendous. Like, I think the best move it learns is Double Edge, which is 100 power, 100 accuracy, and you take recoil damage. Yeah, I'm willing to put it in D tier. Next is Vile Plume, which... Here's an odd thing about Vile Plume. So, Oddish evolves to Gloom at level 21, and Vile Plume, it learns moves at level 15, 17, and 19. It doesn't get anything at 21 or higher, which is when you would have it. This thing just feels like an inferior Venusaur to me, because its stats are basically either the same or worse than Venusaur. It doesn't get Razor Leaf, never mind guaranteed critical hit Razor Leaf. It does get Petal Dance, though, which is one of the better Grass-type moves in Gen 1, even though it's 70 power Petal Dance. But you have to wait until level 38 to get it. And it's like, you know, if you were training a Vulpix instead, you'd have a Flamethrower, a more powerful move, three levels before then. I'm tempted to put Vile Plume in C, just because it, it does still have good stats, so it can still, like, inflict damage and take a hit. It does also get Sleep Powder at level 19. It's definitely not the worst thing you could use. Speaking of worse options, Parasect. So, of course, the big thing with Parasect is that it learns Spore, which is a 100% accurate sleep move. That's about all it has going for it, honestly. <laughs> So yeah, Parasect has Spore, it gets Slash at level 39, and it's not fast enough to get a guaranteed critical hit with it, and until then, you're stuck with Scratch and Leech Life unless you give this thing a TM. Oh yeah, who wants to learn a fun fact about the Gen 1 type chart? Uh, Poison is super effective against Bug in Gen 1, which means that Parasect has three quadruple weaknesses. It takes four times damage from fire, it takes four times damage from poison, it takes four times damage from flying. And on top of that, it's still weak to ice, bug, and rock. It's so great! 100% accurate sleep, though, is pretty nice utility. I'd rather use this thing than Beedrill just because of it, so I think this thing barely gets into C tier. Barely. Speaking of poison types, here's Venomoth. So, Venomoth gets Poison Powder, Stun Spore, Sleep Powder. At pretty high levels, though, Sleep Powder comes in at 43. Its level up move pool is kind of abysmal until higher levels. It gets Psybeam at 38 and Psychic at level 50. It doesn't really get anything terribly great from TMs. I'm gonna put it in C. I'm putting it in C because it does have decent stats. And Psychic, Sleep Powder, they are funny, even if you're likely not going to get them until the end of the game. Because remember, Special is one stat in Gen 1, so Psychic has a 30% chance of lowering Special by one stage. Dugtrio, we're finally getting back into some good mons. Because, of course, Dugtrio is one of the fastest things in the game, so it has one of the best critical hit rates in the game. On top of that, it gets Slash, which is a guaranteed critical hit. It gets Earthquake by level up. Honestly, I really like it. I'm tempted to put this thing into A. So next up is Persian. For some reason, this thing doesn't get Slash until level 51. I'm gonna put Persian in C just because I don't like it. So Golduck is basically inferior Blastoise. It doesn't get a water move via level up, except for Hydro Pump at level 59. Of course, like basically every water type, it does get Blizzard, which is ridiculous in Gen 1. Its stats are very balanced, which is both a good and a bad thing. I'm gonna stick Golduck and C. There's just way better water types you can use. The fact that water is a pretty saturated type just doesn't help it. Here's a fun fact about Primeape. For some reason, it learns Thunderbolt and Thunder. I don't know why. Here's another fun fact about Primeape. It learns Scratch and Fury Swipes, but not Slash. There's, like, no good fighting-type moves in Gen 1. Like, the best fighting-type move is Submission, which is 80 power, 80 accuracy, and you take recoil damage from it. Why? I'm very tempted to put Primeape into D but it does have stats, so I think it might be C. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make a C minus tier. You guys, get in there. Arcanine 
is kind of an interesting one because Arcanine does have some really solid stats. And it's also well balanced too. The problem is that unlike Vulpix, Growlithe gets Flamethrower at level 50. So you're basically going to be teaching this thing Fire Blast. It's leveled up moveset as a whole that's just kind of lackluster, honestly. You're basically going to want to give it Body Slam. You can give it Dig too. It's just, it's very TM reliant. I'm tempted to put it here, in B. Just a reminder, by the way, these guys are sorted by Pokedex order. They're not, like, ranked in the tier itself. Uh, next up is Poliwrath, which sure is a Pokemon. Like, it gets Hypnosis. It does get Body Slam via level up, so you don't have to use the Body Slam TM on it, but... Its offensive stats aren't particularly great, and it's also a little slow. I think we'll put it in C tier. Oh boy, Alakazam. I don't think Alakazam needs any kind of introduction. It's blazing fast, has a great special, gets psychic. It's an extremely one-note Pokemon, but it's just so good. It deserves nothing less than S. And then there's Machamp. Machamp does actually have some decent bulk, and it has a sky-high attack stat. It does kind of feature a number of problems that Primate has, though. Namely, it doesn't have the greatest level-up learn set, but I'm inclined to say it's slightly better than Primates, because Machamp is capable of learning Earthquake, so you can get Rock Slide plus Earthquake for some good coverage, you can give it Body Slam. It is weak to Psychic types, but I think it's honestly a solid Mon if you're capable of evolving it. It is a trade evolution, so I'm inclined to put it into B. And yeah, in Yellow specifically, there's an NPC that'll trade you a Machoke, which will automatically evolve into a Machamp. So, even if you don't have a Link Cable, you can use it pretty easily in Yellow. Victory Bell is is the best comparison to Venusaur because it has good offensive stats, it gets Razor Leaf and has enough speed for it to be a guaranteed critical hit. It's a little frailer than Venusaur, but it's capable of learning Sleep Powder before level 50 something. So I think that basically puts it in A tier alongside Venusaur. Next up is Tentacruel, which has a base special stat of 120 in Gen 1, which is extremely impressive. Yeah, after the special stat split, it has 80 special attack, so it's way more powerful in Gen 1 than in any other generation. Now, on top of that, it has 100 speed, so it's really fast, too. And it also gets barrier to both patch up its weaker defense stat and also make it pretty bulky. Yeah, with Swords Dance, you can just use Hyper Beam, and then if you KO something with Hyper Beam, you don't need a recharge turn. That's extremely funny. So yeah, definitely A for sure. Yeah, Golem is, uh... It's, it's a Pokemon. I think it's inferior to Rhydon, stats-wise, and both have a pretty similar learn set. It's a trade evolution, too. Oh yeah, and Rock Throw is hilarious in Gen 1, because it has 65 accuracy for some reason. So, raising it up is a little annoying. I'm gonna put it in C. So, Rapidash. I'm honestly putting it in C-, just because you get it so late, its moveset is terrible. I don't like it. Alright, so Slowbro is kind of funny because it gets Amnesia at an alright level, level 44, which boosts the user's special stat by two stages. So it's basically like Calm Mind, but doubled. And it already has great physical bulk, so one Amnesia and bam, you're just a freaking wall that can also hit really hard with your water move of choice, with Psychic, Ice Beam, or Blizzard. Fire Blast. It's incredibly slow though, so you are gonna have to take a hit, and you're most likely not gonna get a critical hit with this thing. It does take a while to get Slowpoke though, it's kind of a mid-game Pokemon. I'm honestly willing to put Slowbro in A tier though, just cause it does have a lot of neat tricks at its disposal, and Gen 1 Amnesia is absolutely hilarious. So, Magneton. This thing's type coverage consists of electric and normal moves, and it doesn't have the physical attack stat to use normal moves. It does have a really good special stat at 120 though, and its physical defense isn't half bad at 95 either, so 
it can take a hit even without the steel typing. So like, it, it's not the worst thing, but you can totally do better, especially with electric types. C minus, I think. Actually, yeah, where do you get Magneton? You get Magneton at the power plant, which is also where you get Zapdos, which is just better in every conceivable way. Farfetch'd. I've been trying to keep F for Pokemon that come too late in the game to use them, but Farfetch'd is really only good for HMs, because it gets cut, it gets fly. Dodrio is just the best normal flying in Gen 1. It gets Drill Peck, like Firo, but at an earlier level. It has better stats than Firo. Okay, its HP is slightly lower, and its special is one point lower, but I think it's just barely good enough to get into A tier. Dugong... Uh... This thing is just Diet Lapras in, like, the most insulting way possible. You have no reason to use this thing, really. Muck. Hey guys, did you know that Muck spelled backwards is delete your account? Muck gets special mention because it's one of the two evolutionary families in Gen 1 that can learn Sludge. It also learns Thunderbolt and Fire Blast, but its special is only 65, so... There's better things to teach those moves to. Still, with a 105 attack stat and access to some normal moves like Body Slam, Sludge, Self-Destruct, and Explosion if you want to be funny, I'm willing to put it in C tier. It evolves at level 38, which is late. Oh god, you don't get Grimer until Pokemon Mansion. Okay, never mind, this thing's C, uh, C-. So Cloyster is an interesting water type. It has a ridiculously high defense stat. Also, if you're insane enough to keep your shelter a shelter until level 50, you get Ice Beam via level up. Yeah, looking at Cloyster, I'm not terribly impressed. I'm kind of neutral, I guess, on Cloyster. I don't have many thoughts about it other than not impressed. Now, Gengar, on the other hand, I am impressed by. This thing has 110 speed, 130 special, it does not learn a Poison-type move, and Ghost... you really shouldn't even think about using Ghost-type moves in Gen 1. But it gets Hypnosis, it gets Thunderbolt, Psychic, it gets Explosion if you want to be funny. It's just a really solid Pokémon. It is a trade evolution, though, and Haunter isn't as great in the stats department, so that keeps Gengar in A tier for me. Onyx! I'm not even gonna look anything up about Onyx. I think we just can all agree on this. Okay, chat, you've changed my mind. Onyx is going in F tier, especially since Farfetch'd is there. Now, Hypno is pretty interesting because it's basically Alakazam, but it trades Alakazam's speed for physical bulk. Also, unlike Alakazam, it does learn Hypnosis, so it does have something over Alakazam other than better physical bulk. Honestly, I'm willing to put Hypno in A tier, especially since it gets Psychic at a pretty good level, level 37. Now, Kingler is a physical water type before the physical special split. It has 50 base special. It has Crap Hammer, which has a high critical hit ratio, and it's fast enough to where it would be a guaranteed critical hit, but... It has 50 special. It learns Blizzard, but it has 50 special. This thing is just a normal type without the normal typing. It goes in B. Next is Electrode, which, uh... Electrode is like the fastest thing in the game in Gen 1, but it has like no other stats. It's obtainable earlier than Magneton. I think it's fair to put it in the same tier as Magneton. Alright, now here's an interesting take. Executor? S tier. This thing is insanely bulky. This thing's bulk is 95, 85, 125, with 125 being its special attack too. You slap Psychic on it, Toxic, Leech Seed, you can't kill it. Executor is insanely good. Like, I did a low level run of blue once, and, and that that's what I brought to the Elite Four. I brought it into the Elite Four, like a level 28 Executor with Toxic, Leech Seed, and two other moves, I assume like Psychic and some random garbage. It worked wonders in there. And it was level 28 
Executor is insanely good, and I feel like that might be a sleeper pick for some people, like a Pokemon that people will just easily forget about, but no, in Gen 1, Executor is pretty freaking good. Now, Marowak, it does have less attack than Sand Slash, but it's actually capable of learning a ground move. And it's even a pretty decent ground move at that. It gets Bone Meringue, which is 90% accurate Earthquake. I think it's comparable to Sand Slash. Alright, hot take here with Hitmonlee. I don't think it's that good. Like, it's the better of the two Hitmons, but in Gen 1, Hitmonlee has 50 HP, 53 defense, 35 special defense. This thing needs to Oko its target, and if it doesn't, it dies. In addition, you're stuck with double kick until you get high jump kick at level 48. I'm going to put it in C- minus because I consider it pretty similar to Beedrill, but this thing is more capable of taking out a target in one hit than Beedrill. And yeah, Hitmonchan, it at least has a physical defense stat, but it's still frail, and it doesn't really get a good move other than normal TM of choice, because it gets the elemental punches, but it has a special stat of 35 in Gen 1. It goes in D tier. Licky Tongue. God, Linky Tongue's attack stats are horrible. 55 attack, 60 special. It learns a crap load of moves, but it doesn't have an offensive stat to use them with. It has decent physical bulk, but like I feel if you're gonna use a bulky normal type in Gen 1, it's just outclassed by Snorlax. I think D tier is fair. So now we come to Weezing, which again, Weezing does learn Sludge, so it at least has a poison move that it can use. I would also say its stat spread is better than Mux, and it does learn like Thunderbolt and Fire Blast on top of Explosion and Sludge, so you can actually form a decent moveset with this thing. I think it goes in C. It is also only in the Pokemon Mansion, so you're not getting that thing early. Okay, so Rhydon is basically just better Golem. The downside is that it evolves at a bit of a high level, and it doesn't learn any rock or ground type moves via level up, so you're gonna have to use that Earthquake, Dig, Rock Slide TM on it. But other than that, it's basically better. I'm willing to put it in B. Next up is Chansey, which... <laughs> Uh, first off, Chansey is ridiculously hard to catch. It's a really rare encounter in the Safari Zone, and it has a catch rate of 30, which is absolutely horrible. If you manage to catch it, though, it does have a special stat of 105, so you can give it Ice Beam or Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Fire Blast, and some funny support moves like Thunder Wave, Toxic. It also learns Psychic, too. The problem is that you have to catch it, and I think just because it's a pain in the butt to catch, I'm going to put it in C. If you get it, it's an easy A, but you have to get it, and it's a pain to get. So I think a middle tier is good enough for it. Tangela is a funny one, and by funny, I mean not good. It has good defense, good special. It gets the powder moves to inflict paralysis or sleep, but it's not going to get a good grass type move. It's just not going to get a good special move in general. Its only real option is a normal move off of 55 attack. D. Kangaskhan... I feel like Kangaskhan is an alright substitute if you're unfortunate and accidentally KO both your Snorlaxes and save over that, because its special is bad, but the rest of its stats are really well balanced and pretty high as well. Gets, you know, Body Slam, Double Edge, Hyper Beam, Earthquake, Rock Slide. It is annoying to catch though, because it's only in the Safari Zone and it has a 45 catch rate. I'm gonna put it in B. Cedra isn't terrible in Gen 1, but you could definitely do better, because normally Cedra has a horrible special defense stat, but its special stat in Gen 1 is 95, so combined with its 95 defense, it can actually survive a hit. It's just kind of one note. I'm putting it in C tier, because I'd rather use it over Dugong. Now, Sea King. Sea King at least has a decent special stat, but its attack stat is higher. I, 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 I don't, I don't know why anyone would subject themselves to Sea King. 
Okay, that is true. It does get Horn Drill, and it has a decent speed stat, so it might actually be able to use it. We'll bump you up to C- minus for Horn Drill X accuracy shenanigans. Now, Starmie! Starmie is just absolutely fantastic. Like, it comes fairly late into the game. You need the Super Rod, and it's either on the routes south of Fuchsia or in Seafoam Islands, but this thing is just phenomenal. Great stats, fantastic type coverage. You get your Water Move of Choice, Psychic, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, or Blizzard, Thunder Wave if you want to be more supportive. This thing is absolutely fantastic in almost every game it's in easily an S tier for me. Now, Mr. Mime. Why are you using this thing? Just use Hypno for Christ's sakes. Mr. Mime has like one thing over Hypno, and that's that it gets Thunderbolt. You do get Mr. Mime in a trade too for boosted experience. I'm putting in C. So Scyther is really fast, actually has a pretty good attack stat at base 110, and it gets Slash for the guaranteed critical hit. The downside is that that is it. Sure, it gets Sword Stance, but in Gen 1, critical hits ignore your stat boosts, so there's no reason to use Sword Stance. It only gets a Flying-type move in Yellow, and that's Wing Attack at level 50, and then on top of that, you have to catch this thing in the Safari Zone. I'm putting this thing in C, because just go for Kangaskhan, man. Jinx is a bit of an interesting one because it gets a 75% accurate sleep move. It gets Ice Punch, which is a decent enough ice type move. It does get Blizzard via level up, but not until level 58. But you do have a chance to reach level 58 because you get it in a trade, so it's gonna get boosted experience. Honestly, I think the biggest downside to Jinx is that it doesn't get Psychic via level up, so you have to use the TM for it. I feel like Jinx is probably fine in B... So, Electabuzz is only in red, but it's probably the best electric type other than Zapdos. Actually, there's Jolteon, so I shouldn't say that. Okay, I'm looking at this thing's level up move pool, and it's not that great. It does get Psychic, though, via TM, which is funky, and it does have a decent attack stat, too, so you can use normal moves. Honestly, I'm inclined to put Electabuzz in B. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I think the biggest problem with Electabuzz, other than being a version exclusive, is that you catch it in the place you get the best electric type in the game. Now, Magmar is the blue counterpart to Electabuzz, and it is only in Pokemon Mansion, so it's later in the game. This thing's a weird one, because it comes late into the game, but it's probably one of the better late game mons. I think I'm gonna stick it in C. Pinsir! Uh... Okay, Pinsir's actually kind of funny, because it's surprisingly fast at 85 speed. It gets Slash, a little late granted at level 49. It gets Guillotine at level 30, so you can abuse X accuracy with that. Alright, you know what we're doing? We're making B-. minus, And the inhabitants of B- minus are gonna be... You? 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 We'll put Mr. Mime in B-. minus. Yeah, I guess we can put Chansey in there, too. Alright, next up is Tauros, which... Arguably the better normal type between Kangaskhan and itself. I'm willing to put it in the same tier as Kangaskhan. I find them kind of interchangeable, in my opinion. Now, Gyarados is a weird one. Because you can't find Gyarados in the wild in Gen 1, other than in Yellow. And in yellow, it's only in Fuchsia City. Only with the Super Rod, and it's a 10% chance to find it. But, if you can bother to evolve it from a Magikarp, Gyarados has fantastic stats. 100 base special, 125 attack. Its worst stat is its defense, which is 79. Its typing makes it only weak to electric and rock, which aren't terribly common. And its special stat being 100 means it can take advantage of the myriad of special moves it can learn, between Surf or Hydro Pump, Ice Beam or Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Fire Blast, 
You can even give it the bubble beam TM you get from Misty when it first evolves, so that it has a good water stab. Plus, you can very easily get a Magikarp from the Salesman in the Mount Moon Pokemon Center. Honestly, I'm gonna put Gyarados in A. And, uh, now the tier list is so big that I can't fit it all on stream at once, so uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Now we're gonna move on from one good water type to another good water type, because we have Lapras next, which is just way better Dugong, way better Cloyster. It's a bit on the slow side with base 60 speed, but the rest of its stats are fantastic. It learns Thunderbolt, Psychic, Solar Beam if you want to be weird, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Hydro Pump, Surf, Confuse Ray, Body Slam. It gets Body Slam and Ice Beam by level up, so it's good for saving TMs. And Lapras is literally given to you in Sylph Co. Like, you don't have to bother catching it or anything. It's an extremely good choice for a lore type. Very much deserves the A slot. I still think Starmie is better. Next is Ditto. Next is Eevee. <laughs> and the various Eeveelutions. Uh, so first up is Vaporeon. So Vaporeon is kind of one note, unfortunately. It doesn't really get anything funny like some of the other water types. Looking at where I've placed other things, I'm gonna put Vaporeon in B-. Jolteon is one of the fastest things in the game with its base 130 speed. It has 110 special too. It gets Pin Missile for some reason at level 48. Really, Jolteon's main thing is that it has a speed stat so it can crit like crazy. I'm inclined to put it into B for that reason, but I don't think it's really that great outside of the speed stat. Flareon, I do think Gen 1 is one of the better generations for Flareon because its special stat is 110, so this is the best generation for it to use special attacks. I think B- is fair, just because it does hit hard, but it's slow and its physical bulk isn't that good. Uh, next is Porygon, which, uh, uh, okay, I'm glad we've had this chat. Like, okay, to Porygon's benefit, it does get Ice Beam, Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Psychic, it's just 75 special isn't that special. It's really slow at 40 speed. I'm gonna move it up to D tier, because I feel it's a bit of a disgrace to put in with F, just because it does actually get some really nice moves. Now we're moving on to the fossils, which, uh... Okay, so in red and blue and yellow, you get the fossils at level 30, so it's not terrible. Omastar is a bit of a funny choice because it has 115 special, and 125 defense. So it's able to take a hit pretty well, and it can use water moves and ice beam or blizzard pretty well. It only has 60 attacks, so normal moves aren't going to do too much with it. I'm going to give it B minus, just because it does have some good stats. Kabutops has 80 speed, and it gets slash at level 39, so it's able to abuse guaranteed critical hit slash. It does not learn Rock Slide, though. So, unless you want to use Submission, you're only getting normal moves to use with its physical attack. And 70 Special is nothing to write home about, so it can't use Surf or Ice Beam that well. I'm gonna put it in B- minus just cause Guaranteed Crit Slash is funny, and its physical defense isn't that bad either. Now, Aerodactyl! Unfortunately, Aerodactyl doesn't get Rock Slide in Gen 1, so you're stuck with a normal move and fly, or sky attack, for physical moves, but 105 attack is pretty good, and it has 130 speed, so it's gonna crit a lot too. It does get some special moves like Fire Blast, but it only has 60 special, so it's not really gonna get much use out of them. I do think it's probably the best of the fossils though, so I'm gonna put it in B. 
So Snorlax, of course, has the monstrous HP stat, pretty good attack at 110. It only has 65 special in Gen 1, but it does get amnesia. So if you wanted to use like Surf, Fire Blast, Blizzard, Thunderbolt, you can. It also gets Psychic too. But yeah, I think Snorlax is just really good. You're probably going to be using it for physical moves mostly, but you can get away with special moves if you really wanted to. Plus, it's just really bulky. I think it deserves S. Next is Articuno, which is funny because it gets Ice Beam, and then you level it up once, and it gets Blizzard. So you have access to the two great Ice-type moves in Gen 1 without having to use the TM for either of them. Articuno also has a 125 special stat in Gen 1, so those moves are gonna hit pretty freaking hard, too. I guess you could give it Bubble Beam too, just to give it another special attack to use. 85 attack isn't the worst, though, so you could use like Fly or Sky Attack, normal moves. Articuno's ultimately a pretty solid choice. I think the utility of being able to have Ice Beam and or Blizzard without having to use the TMs for them is pretty nice. So I'm going to put it in A tier. Zapdos is the next of the birds, and th th there's no denying it, Zapdos is the best of them. Fantastic stats, fantastic typing. Unfortunately, it doesn't get Thunderbolt via level up in Gen 1, so you do have to use your Thunderbolt TM unless you want to use either Thundershock or Thunder, but it does get Drill Peck. It really does kind of sting that you have to use your Thunderbolt TM on it unless you want to have some fun with the RNG and risk it with Thunder. So, unfortunately, I think just because of that, I'm gonna put Zapdos in A tier, but it's a very high A tier. Then there's Moltres, which just comes at the end of Victory Road, so... It might be a little bit harsh to put this thing in F, but, like, the only battles after the point you get it are the Elite Four. Next up is Dragonite, which... this is probably gonna be a spicy one here. Dragonite is also going into F tier, because it doesn't evolve until level 55, and at that point, you're either gonna be in the Elite Four when you get to level 55, or you're going to be using nothing but Dratini for the whole game. Dragonite is definitely a great Pokemon, though. It's just... You, you don't have many opportunities to use it. There's two Pokemon left, and, uh, spoiler alert... They both go in F tier. Mewtwo is literally the only post-game content in Red, Blue, Yellow. And Mew... you can only get it with a glitch. But it's a really good Pokemon if you want to go through the effort of setting up the Mew glitch and catching it and all that. Yeah, Mew Glitch isn't hard to do, but I'm kind of ignoring the Mew Glitch just because if we take Mew Glitch into account for Pokemon availability, then you can get basically whatever Pokemon you want at whatever point in the game, just about. But yeah, if you don't want to use glitches or anything, you just can't get Mew. If you do want to use glitches, then Mew is probably S tier. But yeah, that is my in-game viability tier list for Gen 1 of Pokemon. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you want to help the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Check out what's on the screen for some more Pokemon content, too. A big thanks to Lord McAfee, Mithril Monarch, and the rest of my patrons for going the extra mile and financially supporting the channel. See you next time, everyone.